Hello again and welcome to another Bolt Action video and today guys we are going to be continuing with our Bolt Action Starter Army review series and we will actually be wrapping up the German Starter Armies by taking a look at the Africa Core box set. Let's dive straight into this. So for those of you who are new to this series, how I tend to do these videos is I take a look at exactly what you're going to get in the box. I then do a bit of a deep dive and drill down on those kits. Are they newer kits, older kits, and what kind of time period are they appropriate for? And then lastly, we compare this starter army to some of the other ones available for this faction. But let's crack on with the video. So in this starter army, you are going to get 36 plastic infantry, one plastic vehicle, three artillery pieces, some of which are plastic, some of which are metal, and then you are going to get 14 crew members for those artillery pieces, all of which will be metal models. So that is a pretty respectable amount of models that you're going to get in the starter army. And the only thing of difference between this one and many of the other star sets is you're only going to get one vehicle rather than two. But we'll dive into that a little bit more later on when we compare it to the other starter armies. So that's what you get in the box. Now let's drill down into the specific kits and we'll start with the 36 plastic infantry. Now these will be the Africa Corps models and this is going to come with some advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of these models is that they are one of the newer kits made by Warlord Games, which means you're going to get plenty of weapons that are molded into hands. You're not going to have to mess about trying to line hands up and ending up with loads of hands that are just balls or super glue trying to hold badly fitting rifles into them. So it is one of the more modern kits made by Warlord Games. The sculpts are really nice and because they're the Africa Core ones, you do get some cool, unique, different head swaps. So you will get the cool bandito mass as long with the regular helmets and field caps. Now one of the strongest points about this kit is the uniforms. Yeah, you can go full Desert Africa Corps with them, the Bandito masks and the Pith helmets and all that good stuff. Or, if you don't want to be locked into a single theatre, you can absolutely build these guys in generic German uniforms. Because unlike the British 8th Army, who are all running around in short sleeves and shorts, who are very much locked into basically fighting in North Africa and Italy, and it looks a bit weird if they fight anywhere else, the Africa models, by and large, are not wearing shorts, they're not wearing short sleeve shirts, they're actually just wearing standard German uniforms of the time. Now, I can attest to this personally, I've seen it done, Africa Corps models work really well when mixed in with infantry sets from other time periods. They just look like good old fashioned German infantry at the end of the day. And it's one of the strongest things about the kit. You can use them for any theater. However, the Africa Corps weapon options that you're gonna get are a bit strange because this is a mid-war infantry kit, which means you are not gonna find any STG-44s in this kit and you are not going to find any Panzerfausts either. Now, a lot of people consider assault rifles and Panzerfausts to almost be a soft faction trait for the Germans because no other faction really gets access to assault rifles in the quantities that they do and no one really gets access to the Panzerfaust unless you let the Soviets running some captured ones. So the fact that you're missing both those weapon options is a little bit limiting. You will be forced to use basically SMGs and rifles and machine guns, and you are gonna miss out on some of those later war weapon options. To give you an example of this, despite the fact you're gonna get plenty of rifles in these sprues, you're only going to get two SMGs per six men and only one LMG. So you are gonna find that you're going to be lacking some of that automatic firepower that maybe the late war German starter armies will give you. But on the flip side, you're also going to get some really cool, unique weapon options, which you just cannot get in the late war infantry kits. For example, you're going to get a light mortar and an anti-tank rifle per sprue of six men. And why is this really important is it means that you're not only going to get your 36 plastic infantry, your three weapon teams and your tank, but you can actually build an anti-tank rifle team from this kit and a light mortar team, which means actually this data set allows you to build five weapon teams overall, which is actually probably bigger than it first seems because that's gonna give you loads of extra variety when it comes to building your list. You're not gonna be forced to take the same weapon teams every single time. Sometimes you're gonna drop that medium mortar and take the light mortar instead. Sometimes you're gonna drop that medium machine gun and take the light anti-tank rifle. Sometimes you're gonna take all five of those weapon teams. So it really does give you a lot of variety when it comes to building your list and that cannot be overstated. Now, if the mid-war thing really is a bit of a deal 
deal breaker for you, then what I would say is that when you're coming to buying the starter army, you're naturally going to want to expand out from it anyway. The starter armies are great, but they always have a couple of limitations. You're going to want to pick up an extra box or something here and there. What I would do is if you're looking for an expansion to the Africa Corps starter army, just pick up a box of standard German grenadiers and you will get all of the assault rifles you'll ever need all of the panzer files you ever need and at that point you're going to have all the german infantry that you're going to need for any of your battles and you'll have all the different weapon options for those infantry so just to give you an idea of like how easy it is to expand out from that if you paint these guys up in a non-theater specific way and get yourself a little extra box of grenadiers you're going to have more than enough weapons to deal with any situation and any time period that you want to play in now moving on from the plastic infantry we've got the weapon teams and we have got the medium machine gun and actually this is a really cool unique medium machine gun, because unlike in the other star sets where you're going to find an mg42 medium machine gun team you're actually going to find this is an mg34 one now in terms of rules that makes very little difference a medium machine gun team is a medium machine gun team at the end of the day however one cool thing it does open up for you is you could run the MG34 as both a medium machine gun team, or if you want to save some points, you could run it as a light machine gun team. There are actually rules for that in the Fall of France supplement for the Germans. So check that out. It actually allows you to run two different kinds of weapon team that the MG42 doesn't normally let you do. After that, you've got the standard yet very awesome medium mortar. I talk about these in every single one of my starter army reviews. Medium mortars are an auto include for any army, in my opinion. Be that German, Allies, Axis, Soviet, it doesn't matter. Medium mortars are just the bog standard weapon that you want to be taking in every single one of your lists. They give you a good amount of indirect fire. They've got a good HE template. And overall, they're just a fantastic unit. So it's great when a set includes them. And when a set doesn't include a medium mortar team, it really makes me look down on it so overall a great inclusion let's move on to the next piece which is the flak 88 now this is interesting because in all the other starter sets we've seen the pack 40 which is just a heavy anti-tank gun but the flak 88 is a super heavy anti-tank gun it is the biggest anti-tank profile that you can get in bolt action and it comes with a staggering seven crew which makes it very very durable most of these guns are going to come with four crew like your pack 40 or your medium anti-tank gun might only come with three crew but the flak 88 comes with seven that means it's going to be really hard for people to just pick up a couple of them and then the rest run away from morale that's just not going to happen the enemy's going to have to kill four crew members before you even start thinking about morale the enemy's going to have to kill six crew members before you even take a minus one to hit for having less than two crew members you know to the guys have the last guys and do all the loading and aiming and firing himself so it's a really really good artillery piece i have a flak 88 i love running it at the very least it's a very intimidating model when someone throws down a flak 88 they're saying that they're here for business they're not messing around now it is quite expensive you're going to find it coming at about 160 points for a regular one but i have found that it's not just an anti-tank weapon it is an anti-everything weapon. It is going to be popping any tank that you shoot at. And also it comes with a really big HE template as well. It actually has a bigger HE profile than the medium mortar. The Flak 88 fires a 3 inch super heavy high explosive HE round which is really really good. Now on top of that the Flak 88 has another rule which makes it unique. Which is not only can it be fired as an anti-tank gun. But it can be fired as a medium howitzer, which means you can take a spotter for it and it can fire indirectly. That is a big, big deal. That cannot be overstated. Having two sources of indirect fire, both of which are very strong in a starter army, in any army, is a really big plus. So the Flak 88 gets two big thumbs up from me and it's great that Warlord has included it in the starter army. Now, last but certainly not least, we have the Plastic Panzer III, and this is just a great tank to have in a starter army. Several of the starter armies we've seen so far have included things like Stugs, which are okay, but with the fixed gun, it is possible for the enemy to get flanking shots on them, which means they are easier to pop. But the Panzer III is a proper battle tank with a turret. One of the great strengths about this kit is, firstly, it's plastic, which is great. We have seen resin tanks included in some of these starter sets, which is not great. And also is that it is so flexible. I have done a video comparing the Panzer III to the Panzer IV and overall I think the Panzer III is actually better for newer players because you can use it in any 
time period. They literally had Panzer threes going into the fall of France and you can use it all the way through to the fall of Berlin. And the great thing about the Panzer III, the Panzer IV has that same merit as well, don't get me wrong. One of the great things about the Panzer III though, it has so many different variances. Within bolt action, the Panzer IV basically has two. You've got an early war and you've got a rest of war kind of variant. With the Panzer III, you've got early, mid, late and different iterations for each one of those. There's a Panzer III for every season of the year for every day of the week it is probably the most flexible german tank that you can get in your army and for that reason i love it you want a light howitzer you got it you want a light tank gun you got it you want a medium tank gun you got it you want a light tank you got it you got a medium tank you got it you want a combination of all the different factors you got it it's just a really strong solid tank and that's why i would put it as probably my favorite standard medium tank for the germans so what I want to do now is just compare the Africa Corps starter army to some of the other ones that you can get for your Germans. Now, in previous starter army videos, I have very specifically gone through the differences, but I've already covered the Africa Corps starter army so many times and compared it and why I think it is one of the best ones that you can get for your Germans. Really, guys, it comes down to just one thing. Value for money and your price point for getting into the hobby. You see... Pretty much all of the other Star armies that you're going to find for the Germans are going to be £106 from Warlord Games, or maybe even a little bit more than that if you're going for like the Winter German one, okay? The Africa Corps Starter Army is £89, and the reason that it's cheaper is it only has one vehicle in it rather than two. So really, what you have to ask yourself is, do I want a Starter Army that's a little bit cheaper, but I might have to buy an extra vehicle for it later down the road, or you have to ask yourself, do I want to just go in straight at that higher price point and get myself maybe a late war grenadier set, which is going to have all the armored cars and tanks I'm going to need, and it's going to have infantry, medium weapon teams, and all that kind of stuff. Really, it comes down to that. The difference in the two sets is price, and the both equal. The Africa Cost Art Army is probably one of the best ones in terms of value for money because you get a bang on thousand point list. It's great to start with, but you are probably going to have to expand off it. Some of the other starter armies, one of the biggest things I would benefits I'd say about the other starter armies is frankly, you can buy the starter armies and you may never need to buy another model for them ever again. Like they're just, you get everything in one go. So really the question is for you guys to ask yourselves, do I want to get in at a cheaper price point and just see how it goes? Or do I want to go in at that higher price point and maybe have everything I need? However, because of that cheaper price point, because of the fact that it really does contain everything that you need and it's going to give you all of the infantry and different weapon systems to really enjoy and explore all different game mechanics in bot action, I would say that Africa Corps Starter Army is my go-to recommended starter army. It's the best starter army for collecting bolt action Germans because it just has that lower price point. It's such good bang for buck it's such good value for money that i just highly highly recommend it now if you are thinking of getting into bolt action and picking up the start set then i'd really appreciate if you could check out my element games affiliate link down in the description below if you use that link you'll be able to get between 10 and 25 percent off all of your bolt action products from element games they're so uk stockers but they do send bolt action anywhere in the world and the benefit to using that is it helps support the channel not only do you get between 10 and 25 percent off i actually get a little bit of a finder's fee from element games for directing a customer their way don't worry it costs you no more it's just a win 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 situation for everyone you get some money off your products i get a little bit of finder's fee and element games get a customer they wouldn't normally get on top of that i also actually have a referral code which you can find down in the description as well and if you use that at the end of your purchase you'll actually earn double store credit with element games which will help you earn even more money off with your future purchases from element games but that's it for today's video if you've enjoyed it please give it a like maybe leave a comment and even subscribe to the channel and if you've really enjoyed it please consider becoming a channel member and patreon supporter and i just want to say a massive thank you to all of my channel members and patrons their ongoing support allows me to cover more game systems and not just focus on 40k but try other things like bolt action battletech and other game systems too so massive thank you to everyone who has supported me and of course as always i'll see you guys next time